Trillis Woods is a really special place. I, I realized this early on, that it's a fragment of old growth forest. So it's not a, a, an area of forest which is regrown, it's an, a fragment of what was a much larger extent of forest that grew around the city of Urbana, was mostly cut down as the city of Urbana grew, but small fragments of that forest type have remained. So it contains trees that are 400 to 500 years old. It's really a very valuable fragment for Illinois because it contains remnants of what was really the westernmost extent of eastern deciduous forest. So as I learned more about uh, Trelease Woods, what I discovered was that ecologists have worked in Trelease for a century. The first census of Trelease Woods was done about a century ago, around 1920, and was published in a paper in 1922 by a professor here called Walter McDougall. From 1922, from that paper, we know how many trees there were of each individual species and where they were distributed in the forest. And there's probably nowhere else in North America where we have a century of data where we can look back through time and see how the forest has changed. It's an area that has not been, to our knowledge, directly disturbed by humans. So it's sort of the original land cover and somehow escaped being you know, cut down, cut back during European settlement. So I was excited to sort of continue this work that started a century ago with a new census of Trelease Woods. So we now have undergraduate students there from Integrative Biology and also from the College of ACES Natural Resources. They're out every afternoon for four to five hours and they're conducting this first complete census of Trelease Woods. So what that means is uh, they are mapping, identifying and measuring every tree in Trelease which is greater than about a centimeter in diameter. So at the end of this project they will have mapped probably on the region of 45,000 to 50,000 trees. The idea that it would be an opportunity for students to learn about forest ecology, learn about doing field work, very hands-on opportunity but also that we could use the plot to learn more about forest dynamics in this part of the world. The purpose of the Trelease Census is to get an understanding of forest composition and structure and how this changes over time in a local old growth forest and includes students who are in LAS and NRES in the process of data collection. So my role in that is helping coordinate the census, training students, overseeing their work on a day-to-day -day basis. When I came here to work, I had almost zero experience, and it's nice to like learn new stuff every day. 39.5. One of the things I like the most about this project is just having a reason to be out in the woods every day. I really like having the exposure to the outdoors, which I didn't normally have something like this back at home, or if I were not doing something like working in a lab or something else, I wouldn't be out here enjoying nature and having fun, honestly, just like being out here in the wilderness. So every day we start at Turner Hall where we pick up all of our equipment. We have a bucket full of a bunch of supplies that we use, including DBH tape and tag numbers for the trees. We also pick up poles for the rangefinder. And then once we get to the forest, we will place our rangefinder where we need it to be. We usually place it at one of the poles at a 25 meter marker. And then we will shoot the rangefinder from said spot and find where the trees are exactly in the forest. We actually have a plot of all the trees on our spreadsheet. So we can look on that plot and see where each tree is in the forest. We'll also take DBH measurements and find the species of the tree. This whole project is part of a larger network that's a global effort to monitor forests around the world for changes. So in addition to our site associated with the University of Illinois, there's also a plot that's been established associated with the University of Michigan, another one with Indiana University, one with the University of Wisconsin, and one with Washington U University in St. Louis. So we have our mini network of forest sites now through the Midwest. 
So we were funded for this census from the Student Sustainability Council, uh, which is a fund generated by undergraduates to support sustainability projects on campus. So for our particular project, what they were interested in was understanding how carbon storage has changed in Trelease over the last century. There is uh, around 20 or 21 tree species in Trelease Woods right now. A century ago, there was 31 species. I'm not sure which ones exactly have been lost, but as we complete the census, we'll be able to update that. The hypothesis behind my master's work is to understand how changing fork composition and environmental variation, such as variation in soil nutrients, soil moisture, light availability, distance to the forest edge, as well as forest composition affects carbon storage in wood in forests, and specifically in logs. So understanding how that varies through space and then through time as our forest composition changes. I've actually had a really good time. This environment is basically my backyard, so it's actually really relaxing for me, reminds me of home. And I've become pretty good friends with all of my group mates, so that's a huge plus. And it's great to get out of the lab and get a breath of fresh air. I think it is close to 50-50 in terms of drawing students from LAS versus ACES. In the Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Sciences, we're trying to offer these kinds of courses where students gain hands-on experience and learn skills that they can use going forward. If you ask any ecologist what motivates them, they'll often say fieldwork. For many of us, we just really enjoy being outdoors, being in the forest, really being naturalists and, and making observations and using those observations to design research to answer questions. And the students get to have this like continual experience with a site over the seasons and really understand and see the nuance in variation over time. There's subtleties that you come to appreciate over time. It's been a tremendous opportunity provided to us by the Student Sustainability Committee that we can offer this opportunity to students. Our students are incredibly passionate. They're really inquisitive and intellectually driven to answer questions about how forests work, what is going to change in the future under climate change. And they come up with questions that as ecologists who've worked for decades in these kinds of systems often don't occur to us. And so there's this, this creative aspect as well of working with students.